welcome to the inside of the new Toyota Supra. Exciting. Right, what can I tell you? Well, uh, what can't I tell you? That is the most important thing. This car is still nine months away from production, maybe a bit more, so I can't tell you because they have not released yet. Power details, torque details, weight details, quite a lot of details, basically. But in short, this is a car which shares its architecture with the next BMW Z4. And the two have been developed almost independently of each other from a driving perspective. There'll be somebody somewhere sitting down and working out how much each one costs and where they can share bits and so on and so forth. But this is the car Toyota says it would like to build. So as a Supra should be, it has got a six cylinder engine in the front of three litres, driving the back wheels through here, an eight speed auto. No word on manual yet, I suspect not. Uh, the weight distribution is the one figure they have released, that's 50-50, which is good. And there's a limited slip rear differential, as there should be. And it's worth knowing that the guy who developed this car was the chief engineer on the Toyota GT86 as well. And that's quite a good handling car, isn't it? So what are the rivals? Porsche Cayman, Alpine A110, probably BMW M2, which in competition form is amazing. And I've had a go on the road in this car already, now trying it around a racetrack that I've never seen before. And on the road, what I can tell you is that it feels like a quite a smooth riding, engaging, but daily usable, comfortable sports coupe. It's got a terrific engine, you'll be able to hear it. There's no electronic augmentation, it's just this smooth. And if you put it in sports mode, which firms up the dampers, firms up the steering, it also opens another flap on the exhaust. It's possible to turn all of the traction and stability off. We haven't got it all off here, we've only got it half off because this is a prototype. There are not very many, and if I bin it, I will not be very popular. But it feels to me like a car that's got, I don't know, 330, 350 horsepower, about the same in pounds foot. It's got a really broad power band, but being a six, it does rev very, very smoothly and cleanly. Weight, I don't know, maybe 1,500 kilos. Another couple of stats that Toyota has released. The center of gravity in this is lower than in the GT86, despite the fact the GT86 uses that boxer engine, which is intrinsically low anyway. And also that the chassis rigidity, despite the fact that it's a steel and aluminium shell, there's no carbon fiber in the shell, Nonetheless, the torsional rigidity of the shell is as high as an Lexus LFA, which is pretty good going, isn't it, really? So what does it feel like on a circuit? It feels good. It does not feel like a car that was developed specifically for the track. It feels like a road car that is a good track car. But the steering is smooth, accurate, responsive. It brakes well, it communicates well, and it's just got that lovely balance that a front engine rear drive car has got. I don't think it's as agile as a 718 Cayman. I don't think it's as agile as an Alpine A110, but it's got a different character to it because that's where the engine is. It's just got that really lovely honesty about it, that really nice, natural, sort of neutral balance. Turn in a bit too quick and it'll understeer a little put the power down on the way out and it'll oversteer a little. It's got that really sweet spot balance to it that the best front engine rear drive sports coupes have. And for a car that is optimised as a road coupe, that it's this good on the track, it hasn't run out of brakes, it hasn't run out of tyres. Like it's really terrific actually. It is yet another sports coupe from Toyota. Having spent a few years just chasing sales volumes, making quite boring cars. Is now a company that has really rediscovered 